talks in this chapter about the resurrection. I want us to read a passage that talks a little bit about the resurrection body. And with regard to our glorified body, there's a comparison made to bodies that are out there in the heavenlies. I'm talking about stars. If you have 1 Corinthians 15 now, we're going to be, begin reading in verse 40. So if you'll get yourself to there when you've got it, would you stand with me please for the scripture reading in reverence for the Word of God. 1 Corinthians 15, we'll begin reading at verse 40. And there the Bible says, There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. That shows you, by the way, that sometimes in the Bible, when the Bible is talking about glory, it's talking about brightness. It's talking about a shining. The Lord's return, I mean, the Lord's, the rapture is glorious to us. Uh, Titus 2.13 says that. But the glorious return of the Lord is going to be glorious in that he's going to come as the sun shineth from the east to the west. It's going to be an amazing, uh, bright thing when the Lord comes. Verse 42, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. Folks, take heart as your bodies over a period of time start failing. We're going to have glorious bodies. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Albeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. All of you bear uh, some resemblance to Adam. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. All of us who are saved bear some resemblance to the second Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ. But one day, we're going to really be like Him. 49. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Amen. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, Amen. and this mortal must put on immortality. Amen. So, when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Amen. And there's more to the passage but for time's sake, if you'd look back at verse 41, I'd like to use that for our, our text verse for the message today. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. And I'll talk to you about that business of stars. Would you bow your heads and hearts with me, please, as we pray. Now, dear Father, we are here to worship and honor and glorify you. Yeah. It is you that have made us and not we ourselves. We are thankful to be your children by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, 
who died for our sins according to the scriptures, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Dear Father, we thank you for the comfort of the Word of God. We thank you for the promises of the Word of God. And I pray, dear Lord, that you would use the message to encourage us to believe that the best is yet to come. I pray that you'd help us to not live just in light of this present world, which is just for a moment, but help us to live in light of our eternal Lord and in light of the things that are to come. And bring glory to your name while we're here. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. 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 Be seated, please. Deep down at some time in your life, every one of you have thought about being a star. Even when you were little, you and your brother probably argued about who on the top of the hill was going to be Batman and who was going to be Superman. We used to play King of the Hill. Anybody ever play King of the Hill? Everybody wants to at some time exceed and be on top. There are Hollywood stars, political stars, musical stars, and sports stars, as well as Hollywood. There's also a fascination today, not only with stars, but with angels. And in probably the last 20 years, I've seen a resurgence in interest that the general public has in angels. Even some uh, weekly TV series have had references to or even been built around the subject of angels. And the interesting thing to me about that is that, that angels in the Bible are actually sometimes connected with stars. I've actually speculated and wondered about the fact that there was a star that led the wise men and actually went over, and the Bible says it stood over where the young child was. That's what it says. And I realize that something for something to stand can just mean to be still and stand fast, but the Bible actually connects them in numerous places. For instance, when the Bible talks about the host of heaven, you need to read the context to determine whether it's talking about what stars we see out there or whether it's talking about the Lord's angels when it says the host of heaven. And in one place in Revelation, chapter 1, verse 20, the Lord gives the interpretation of part of what John saw on the Isle of Patmos by saying, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. In Revelation 1.20. You may remember that when the Lord was answering questions about the resurrection. And he was asking quest answering questions about people who didn't believe in the resurrection. You remember the Sadducees trying to tangle him up. And the Lord said for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage. But are as the angels of God in heaven. And then in another place in the book of Daniel. The Bible says, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. You know what the firmament is? It's heaven. And it says, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. When I was a little boy, back before they invented running water, <laughs> There was a TV series called Star Trek. It was about a future time when people would travel. That's what Trek means. They would travel through the stars from one galaxy to another. And believe it or not, those of us who are saved are going to do that one day. While I'm alive here on this earth in this body, I doubt I'm ever going into outer space. My wife is sometimes on our bad days threatened to send one another to the moon. Amen, that comes from watching Jackie Gleason in your carnal days. But the Bible indicates that we're going to be like the stars and we're going to pass through the stars. There was a sequel to that Star Trek series uh, that was called Star Trek, The Next Generation. 
And then there was a movie called Star Trek, The Final Frontier. I want to kind of mix all of that up and call the message, and I'm talking about you and me going home someday Amen. and getting a resurrected body. Yes. I want to call the message Star Trek, The Final Generation. Amen. Star Trek, The Final Generation. There is going to be a generation of believers who are going to leave this earth without dying. Amen. They're the exception to, the, like Enoch. Enoch was an exception to the rule of Hebrews 9.27. And Hebrews 9.27 says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Not everybody's going to die. Enoch did not die. Elijah did not die. And saved people who are alive, when the Lord comes to catch his own home, will not die. We call that great event that could occur at any time. I'm predicting it. Just want to let you know from my Bible study. I'm predicting it to take place on November 25. I hope you're ready. I don't know the day nor the hour, but I just do that every day. I predict that it's going to happen that day. The Bible teaches that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come back one of these days, not to set foot on the earth, but he's going to come back and he's going to appear to save people in the air and in the clouds. And when he does, truly saved people are going to have a gravitational deficiency. We are going to leave. Amen. We're going to leave without dying. It could be that you and I, and I believe this every day, are living in the final generation before the rapture. And I do believe that you and I should be planning on leaving. You need to plan on leaving. First of all, if the rapture doesn't occur in your lifetime, you're not going to stay alive physically forever. You're going to die if the Lord doesn't come in our lifetime. Somebody said concerning life, you might as well realize nobody gets out of this thing alive. Yeah. Well, the truth is, saved people who are alive when the Lord calls His church home, they're going to get out of this thing alive right. without dying. Yeah. The best and the safest thing that I'd like to recommend to you is to predict and plan to leave the earth every day. Amen. To me, that's the best. That's right. is, now, of course, if you're saved, you know that you're going. But I, and, and, and if you don't have that settled, you need to get that settled. But when you do go, you're going to meet the Lord. Amen. And guess what? We saved people are going to give an account to our Lord who saved us. That may not be very popular. may not be a very pleasant thought. But we're going to give an account. Not for salvation. That's settled if you've trusted Christ. We're going to give an account for our service after salvation. So I'd encourage you to, as one preacher used to say, keep short accounts with God. If you get away from Him, confess it, get right back with Him, get close with Him just as soon as you can. And let me just say as I begin into the message, I'm not expecting the undertaker, even though that I may meet Him today, I'm looking for the upper taker, knowing that I may meet Him today. I want you to consider with me a few things about this. And even though that the... Uh, title of the message may seem too light for your dignified and somber, serious tastes. Let me say to you that I am energetic about this. I am enthused about this, but I believe it with all my heart. Amen. I'm serious about this. Consider first of all with me the time of our departure. You say, preacher, when's this going to take place? Well, the good thing is, is be ready. The, Paul, the Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Timothy 4, 6 in what some people consider his swan song, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Now Paul wrote that from prison, and I believe that what he was talking about was that he knew that if something didn't change, he was about to be executed. He believed that if something didn't change, he was about to be killed. But I also know 
that God led the Apostle Paul to write another verse. Titus 2.13. You folks got that one? The Bible says in Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Guess what? That's another departure. Besides just dying, dying is a departure because you leave your body. The rapture is a departure because we leave this earth all together. Amen. 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 With our bodies changed to be made like Him. Now, the Bible says concerning that change, and I'm going to talk to you some more about that in my next thought, but the Bible says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him. For we shall see Him as He is. You don't have to wait until some future time of judgment to find out if you're a son of God or not. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. John 1, 12 says, but as many as received Him, Jesus, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. Again, it's John chapter 1, verse 12. You need to get that settled, but if you're a son of God now, you're leaving someday. Now concerning the time, I'll have to just admit, the exact time is concealed. You see a billboard, and if you live long enough, you'll probably see additional ones. If you see a billboard come up one of these days, and it says, get ready, August 12, 2020, is going to be it. Now, I want you to know, if somebody has some influence, he's going to influence a lot of people to get ready and think that it's going to be August 20, first 20, or, and the 20th day. I want you to know that if the Lord is going to come on August the 20th, not very many people are going to be advertising it. It's going to be at a time when people aren't looking for it to happen. That's one of the reasons why I've known that when these date setters proclaim their date, that, it, that it's just about definitely not going to happen on that date. I mean, it's hard for me, and I change the date every day because I want to be looking for the Lord every day. But when they predict a date, it's hard for me to say that I'm expecting to go that day because if everybody else is looking for it, I figure it's probably not going to happen. That's right. It's going to be a surprise to most people, probably most Christian people. But I will say this, the exact time is closer than it's ever been. Amen. And it could be exceptionally close. I want you to consider secondly with me, and this is what I'm going to give to you is actually found in the chapter where we were reading our scripture reading, I want you to consider the transformation that is necessary for you and me to be able to be in that final generation that goes up. First of all, there's the transformation that takes place inside when you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen. But before we get to heaven, there's going to be a transformation on the outside. I believe that it's going to happen in what we call the rapture. The Bible says, and as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. We read in verse 52, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Amen. For this corruptible, look at it. You can joke about it, but it's corruptible. Look at it. Feel it. It's corruptible. It's falling apart. If you live to be 60, 70, or 80, Here's some good news for you, some of you younger people. And that is, if you start out at the age of 20 at six foot, <laughs> yeah, let me just give you a hint. Uh -oh. By the time you're 80, you're not likely to be six foot. Now somebody perhaps could put you on a rack and stretch you out to the, your maximum point. Maybe. But otherwise, 
there's a good chance that you'll never see six foot after you hit about 60. Okay. Too many things are corruptible that help give you shape. As you get old, you'll find out how corruptible you are. But the Bible indicates that there is coming a great day when we shall be changed. I don't remember the first time that I heard this, but I do think that it would be humorous to put on a nursery door. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. <laughs> when the change takes place for the believer at the rapture, it's going to be swift. It's going to take place fast. It's not going to be in the blink of an eye, but in the twinkling of an eye. And it's going to be supernatural. It's going to be a thing only God can do. I'm amazed at what God has allowed man to do. We're able to replace all kinds of things. And if the Lord tarries, it could be that we're going to replace other things than what we think of replacing now. Amen. There are people who are who are getting new hearts. There are people who get other replacement parts for their bodies. Most notable are things like hip replacement, knee replacement, and then fixing things up. But the truth is, as you get old enough, you realize you're almost uh, not needing anything repaired. You need a major overhaul. It's just about time where you need a replacement for what, you, what you've got. I think of some of you in your automobiles. After a while, you've just bought a new automobile. Yeah. It's going to be supernatural, something that only God can do, and it's going to be superior to anything anybody has ever seen. They have all kinds of contests. They have beauty contests for women. They have bodybuilding contests. And all I may tell you is uh, somebody that that used to work out with weights real often. It was a passion and an enjoyable physical sport for me. It's sad to see what has happened to a lot of people who think that that's what they live for in life. Yeah. And they do anything and everything that they can. If you want to research something that's sad someday, not only will you find that alcoholism is on the rise, and there's more people dying of alcoholism than ever before. Another thing that's sad is all these bodybuilders who are dying before they're 50. And most of it has to do not with them overexerting themselves in the gym. In nearly every case, it has to do with damage done to their bodies, not through working hard, but through drugs they put in their bodies. In order to get quick and, uh, and superior changes. Dearly beloved, here's the change you need. You need to be made like Him. Amen. And He is the perfect specimen in glory for a pattern for you and me. And we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Third, I want you to consider not only the time that we're leaving and the transformation that will take place, but let's consider the trip itself. I uh, titled a message on the rapture one time, Zip Zip. Because it's going to be so fast. The Lord will come down quickly. We'll go up quickly. But when you think about the trip, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 begins in verse 16 by saying, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord, shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. That's right. Dead in Christ, alive in Christ. No, I'm not talking about Southern Baptists and Independent Baptists. I'm talking about people who have died saved, people who are alive, who are alive and are saved when Jesus comes. If you'll excuse the carnality, I'm going to call it, we're going to fly united. Amen. Amen. Yes, My grandmas, both of them, going to come down and their spirit be united with their bodies. There's going to be a transformation. We're going to go up together. Amen. That's what I call united. I can't wait to be able to see them. Be
be able to see my mom and my dad. Some of you folks have loved ones who are what the Bible calls concerning our bodies, asleep in Jesus. There's going to be a sharp division. Uh, only the bodies of those who are saved are going to get up. The other bodies are going to stay in the grave for another 1,000 plus years. Of living people, only people who are alive, who are saved, are going up. Everyone else who is lost is going to be left behind. Then the Bible says not only will there be a sharp division, but there will be a strong delusion. The Antichrist is going to appear. I don't believe he's going to be revealed as the Antichrist when he first shows up, but he'll come as the answer man. And he will make pacts, he'll make treaties, he'll make truces. His big word will be peace. He'll magnify the God of forces and he'll fool the masses of people who would not believe the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. I'm talking about people who had a clear presentation of the gospel and would not listen. They would not hear. They would not believe. They rejected the gospel of Jesus Christ. Those people are going to be damned. They're going to be deceived. They will believe the Antichrist. Then the Bible indicates there will be sure destruction. There is coming a period of time of seven years of the greatest time of God's wrath that this world has ever seen. I don't know, uh, I did not watch any of the old movies about the exodus and the, and the miracles of that time. I don't know how well that they did in trying to make it look real. But I'm telling you that even with the plagues that God put upon Egypt, this world has never seen anything like it's going to take place in Daniel's 70th week. The second half of which is called the Great Tribulation. Hey, it's not just a joke. The Antichrist will be on this earth. It is not just a joke and something to laugh about when your a cash register receipt totals $6.66. There's coming a time when that will be the number. Of any number you'll need, you'll need that number, 666, to buy and sell during the tribulation period. Amen. Those people who receive that number, the mark of the beast, his name, are going to be down throughout all eternity. Yeah. Thank God we saved people will be in heaven while Amen. that's going on. Amen. We will be going through a time of judgment and testing called the judgment seat of Christ. But as rough as that may be, it won't be like what's going on on the earth. I want to ask you to consider with me, though, concerning this final generation and this Star Trek that I'm looking to take part in. I want you to consider the treasure of the truth to the believer. You ought to, I don't know about you, but when I got saved, I didn't know immediately about the second coming. Nobody told me about the second coming when I got saved. By the way, you do not have to know about the second coming of Christ to be saved. Okay? You don't have to know about the ten toes of Nebuchadnezzar's image and what they mean to be saved. You don't even have to know anything about tithing to be saved. You join a Baptist church, you'll hear about it soon enough. But you do need to know about the Lord Jesus Christ and what He did for you on the cross of Calvary to be saved. That's about all I knew when I got saved. And I knew deep down that God wanted me to live right after I got saved. But it wasn't long before uh, this red-faced, uh, he was a Southern Baptist preacher at the time, later on he pulled out and became independent, J. Wallace Little. It wasn't long before he got up there and he started preaching from 1 Corinthians 15. He started preaching from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And I heard additional good news for the belief. And that is that the Jesus who came the first time to save me from my sin is one day going to save me from the very presence of sin Amen. by taking me out of this world and giving me a body that won't sin anymore. Amen. The Bible calls that, that treasure, in truth, that blessed hope. Amen. Why is it blessed? Because it's wonderful. It'll make you happy. Amen. It's a blessing to think about that the Lord could come and take us. Do you know what the last verse in that greatest description of the rapture says? 
The last verse of that greatest description of the rapture, 1 Thessalonians 4, the last six verses, I believe it is, says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. What comfort there is to know that this life is not all there is. Amen. In every service here at church, I'm aware that there are people in church that are in pain. At every service at church, I'm aware there are people in church who are disappointed and who are heartbroken. There are people who are discouraged. I'm talking about saved people. It's a comfort to know that this life is not all there is. And I try to enjoy God's victory in this life. And I'm telling you, whatever you're going through, the rapture's going to fix it. Amen. Whatever you're going through, whether it be a heartache, a disappointment, sadness in the family, personal failure, betrayal, whatever you're going through, I'm telling you, it's going to be one when Jesus takes us home. Amen. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I'm saying that this truth is a treasure because of the comfort that it affords. I believe it's a treasure because of the cleansing that it produces. Do you know that if you understand about the second coming of Christ and you learn something about the judgment seat of Christ, it'll motivate you to live better? Do you know what? I always lived better when I thought Dad was coming within three minutes when I was a teenage boy. Yeah, no, that's right. Yes, sir. I was a model son Yes. right before Dad showed up if yeah, I knew when he was coming. Yes. And if I thought he might be coming, I was a model son. That's why I say it's safer for you to always be thinking the Lord might come today. Amen. Expect him today. I gave you the verse that says, Beloved, now we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know <laughs> that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Right. The very next verse says, And he that hath this hope Amen. in Him purifieth himself, Amen. even as He is pure. Right. That is, if you and I can keep this thing in us, <laughs> thinking about it, dwelling on it, wanting it, cherishing it, Praising God for the truth, it'll help you to live that. Yes. It'll help you to do right. Amen. I need to do right today because tomorrow I may be in heaven. Amen. 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 I need to be kind to this dear lady because I'm going to meet her Savior and mine. Amen. And it could happen today. Yes. I need to do what the Bible says about loving my wife, even as Christ also loved the church. Because I might meet her Savior and mine face to face today. If you are saved, you haven't gotten baptized, I recommend you do it today. This may be the only Sunday you've got between now and facing Jesus. Who may ask you, boy, why haven't you got baptized if you're saved? You may come up with excuses for the preacher. But it's going to be another thing. You ask Job about it, what it's like yeah. to really have an audience with God when God <coughs> says, okay, you had a question? Read Job sometime and see yeah, what yeah. how Job was going to fill his mouth with arguments. And when yeah. God showed up, Job says, well, shut my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. I got nothing to say. Yeah. I just repent and sat all the ashes. Be good for you to get that settled down here. Yeah. Do what God wants you to do. If you're saved, get baptized. If you're saved, get in the church. Join. If you're saved, start attending. If you're saved, start praying. Start reading your Bible. Start opening your mouth and speak up and tell people you're saved. Quit trying to hide all the time from the Lord if you really have trusted Him as your Savior. In public, tell people. Don't be like Peter was before uh, that uh, he shamed himself by denying Christ uh, three times and proud and believing that he wasn't going to ever deny Christ, you don't know what you'll do. That's right. My beloved brethren, the Bible says at the end of this passage we were reading, we didn't get to this verse. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding 
in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Song I like, I think it's in one of our song books, says it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Amen. It will be worth it all when we see Christ. One glimpse of His dear face.